Hi there, grade 8. Our lesson for today is about principle of counting. Before I begin with my lecture, I'd like you to click the subscribe button so that you can be notified whenever I upload new lecture video. So as what I was saying, I'm going to discuss the principle of counting. So what is fundamental principle of counting? The fundamental principle of counting states that if an event A has M possible outcomes, a second event B has N possible outcomes, and the outcomes of the two events do not affect each other, then there are M times N possible outcomes for the two events A and B. For a while. So let me use yellow. So for example, an ice cream parlor offers 10 flavors of ice cream and three types of cones. How many single scoop combinations of ice cream and cone can a customer choose from? So what we're going to do is to assign M and N to the given. So we will let M be the number of flavors. Okay. So this should be the number of flavors of ice cream. And we will assign N B the available the number of available cones. So since the type of cone is independent of the ice cream flavor so it follows that there are m times n which is equal to 10 times 3 which is equal to 30 possible combinations for a single scoop order. Okay. So about a fair coin is toss and a fair six-sided die is rolled. Find the number of outcomes for the two events so the coin toss has if we will assign that as event m two possible so this has two possible outcomes While uh, if we're going to let N be the die roll, so this has six possible outcomes. Okay. So this has six possible outcomes. <coughs> So together, these two events have m times n. So we have 2 times 6 equals 12 possible outcomes. Okay. 
so which can be illustrated by this tree diagram. So if you're going to count, there are really 12 possible outcomes. So from head one until tail six. So we have 12 possible outcomes for that. In order, in order to determine number of outcomes of an event that occurs independently, such as the selection of a number, so one must know whether repetitions are allowed. For example, the digits 1, 2, 3, and 4 are to be used to form a three-digit number. How many distinct numbers can be formed if repetition of digits is allowed? How about if repetition is not allowed? So there are choices for each digit of the required number. Therefore, the number of possible outcomes when repetition is allowed is... So here, if repetition is allowed. So we have four digits. So selection. So there are four ways of selecting the hundreds digit. So there are, again, four ways of selecting the tens digit. And again, there are four ways, again, of selecting the units digit. So we have four times four times four. So we have 64. Numbers can be formed. Okay, so there are 64 ways. In case that repetition is not allowed, so if repetition is not allowed, so there are four possible choices for um for for the hundreds digit since again repetition is not allowed we only have three um three choices for the tens digit similarly we'll only have two choices for the units digit so working on the product of the three gives us 24 ways of selecting three digit numbers without if repetition is not allowed. Now, what is a uh, factorial notation? So because of the abundance of real-life situations that involve the fundamental counting principle, mathematicians found the need to introduce a special notation for the product of consecutive integers. This applies especially to the combinatorics of events that do not allow repetition. Thus, we have the factorial notation, which is defined as follows. So given a non-negative integer n, the symbol n factorial, and this is read as n factorial, is given by n factorial. So n factorial plus equals n minus 1 times quantity n minus 2 times 3 times 2 up to 1. So this is what we mean by n factorial. So for instance, if we say 5 factorial, this is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 up to times 1. So 5 factorial equals, this is 20 times 3, so this is 60 times to 120. So when we say 5 factorial, this is 120.
So like all other forms of mathematical notation, factorials have their own special properties, some of which will be illustrated in our next examples. Okay, so evaluate the expression 8 factorial divided by 7 factorial. So what we will just do is expand 8 factorial until 7. And then 7 factorial all over 7 factorial. So 7 factorial on the numerator and denominator will be canceled. So as a result, we got 8 here. So 8 factorial all over 7 factorial equals 8. So about 7 factorial all over 5 factorial. So this is 7 times 6 times 5 factorial all over 5 factorial. So canceling both 5 factorial on the numerator and denominator, we have 7 times 6 equals 42. So 7 factorial all over 5 factorial equals 42. So how about 5 factorial less 3 factorial? So we know that 5 factorial equals 120 and 3 factorial equals 3 times 2 times 1 equals 6. So this is like 120 minus 6 equals 114. So that's 5 factorial less 3 factorial. So that's it for now, grade 8.